and welcome to the best and worst books that I read in 2023. If you saw my last video, which is the stats of last year, you maybe got a preview of all of these books that I will be talking about today. But I have five favorite books of last year and five worst books that I read last year to talk about today. All of the favorite books are all five stars. The worst books are between one to two stars because there there weren't a lot of one stars thank god so let's get straight into it starting with the best books and we'll save the worst for last so the first book that i'm going to mention from my favorites there is no particular order because i'm not doing that i can't do that is heartstopper volume four by alice osman i love this series i will always love this series I'm not watching the show though. This might be my favorite volume out of all of them, even though I gave them all five stars. If you've never heard of Heartstopper, which I highly doubt, it is a graphic novel about two boys falling in love, basically. In this volume, there are some more deep topics going on. I don't want to spoil, but it made me cry a little bit. So yeah, I loved it. I gave it five stars, obviously. This was great. I love myself a graphic novel. The next book was the book that made me cry the most this year, <laughs> which is Girl Made of Stars by Ashley Herring Blake. This made me cry uncontrollably for like an hour. This book follows a girl whose brother is accused by his girlfriend slash her best friend of raping her. And so the main character does not know who to believe and is in this like, weird moment where she has to decide whether she needs to help and side with her twin brother or believe the friend that is accusing him. It is a lot. I cried a lot, <laughs> but this was so good. Books and Lala was the one that made me buy this. L love her for that. This was amazing. Yeah, if you want to cry, Next, I have another romance book, which is... All of my favorites are romance books. Anyways, Terms and Conditions by Lauren Asher. I gave this five stars. I love this. I love this series. This one follows Declan, and he... In this series, the brothers, the three brothers that we follow, all need to do some task to be able to get their inheritance. In this case, Declan needs to get married and have a child before he gets his inheritance. So he decides to fake date slash marriage of convenience with his assistant called Iris. And it's great. It's lovely. 10 out of 10. I love these characters. It's so well written. I don't care what anyone says. It's one of those books that you eat up in a day. It is so great. So fun. Beautiful. I cried a little bit at the end. I also cried with fine print. Love these books. I need to get to the third one. The next book is a manga that I don't own, which is Love That's an Understatement. I loved this. In this series, we follow two characters, Zen and Risa. Risa is a diligent student. She always has everything you could ever need in her backpack. She has extras of everything. If anything happens, she has it. So one day she stumbles upon this delinquent Zen um, and he is beat up and she helps him and he becomes obsessed with her starts following her and yeah it's a romance between those two it is so cute so fun love it there's a quote in the book i think it's in the first volume which is this one um where he says that he's wearing boyfriend material clothes <sighs> 10 out of 10. and the last favorite book of the year is another manga which is obvious I could have put the whole series in my top of the year, they are, but I'm just gonna put the first one just so I have more variety. <laughs> this show is my favorite romance show, anime, whatever, ever. Love them, love the characters, I need this man in real life for myself. Where are you? I don't know. I love them. I love the other two as well. I love his brother and his girlfriend as well. I love everyone in this series. I just love this. I had the best time reading the whole series in like one day and a half. I stayed up until three in the morning reading these. Beautiful, great time. If you're into romance anime, or just romance in general, and you want to give anime a shot, 
or manga. This is my recommendation. It is 10 out of 10. So cute. So that is the good side. And this side is going to be empty because I've already unhauled all of the books that I hated. So we're going to imagine they're going to be there, okay? So for the worst books, I also have five. And I'm going to start with the least bad and I'm going to go and the last book will be the worst one of the year because there is a worst. There isn't a best, there is a worst. We're gonna start off with Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. I gave this book a two star. Not a terrible rating, but still terrible. Long story short, this book is a Rumpelstiltskin retelling. A girl is very good at making money. She gets a deal from this fae-ish person, um, which is if she can make silver turn into gold for him, he will give her a reward, which is to be his queen. She does it, whatever. And we follow a variety of characters. This book was so not for me. The plot was boring. There were too many characters. Every single chapter was a different character with no title to differentiate at all. I don't know why I have to Sherlock Holmes a book to understand who's talking, but here we are. The romances were terrible, just not for me. The next book is a romance which is not here to be liked by Michelle Quatch, I think. Um, I also gave this a two star. It follows this girl who is very unlikable, who works for this school newspaper thing. Um, and this new guy comes in and basically takes the role that she wanted, which is editor something, doesn't matter. They have like a hate relationship until they start dating. Um, yeah, that's the plot. I hated it because it was out of nowhere that they start dating. Makes no sense at all. And the main character, there is a warning on the back of the book saying she's unlikable. She's not unlikable, she's just fucking annoying. She's a pick me to the highest degree. She literally says in the book, I don't wear makeup. I wear frumpy clothes. I didn't ask. Also, this book is centered around feminism and the main character is not a feminist, which pissed me off. The most feminist person in the book is the guy that she is using feminism to take over his position. Why? Moving on. The next book that I have is The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. I also gave this a two. I don't like Paula Hawkins, just period. This one follows a woman who goes on the train every day, the same route, and she sees this house on the side passing by. And one day she witnesses something and she thinks that the man murdered his wife. I didn't like this because it was A, predictable, which makes the book unthrilling for a thriller. The second thing that I hated about this book is that all of the characters are absolute idiots. There's not a smart person in this book. The main character, no sense in here. Who witnesses what they think is a murder? And instead of being like, 911, what's your emergency? No, she decides to just waddle her way up there and be like, hi! And then the other woman was also stupid for spoilery reasons. Just everyone's dumb. No, I can't deal with dumb people. I was bored. I didn't like it. And the ending was super boring. Plot twist, nowhere to be found. <laughs> now we're getting to second worst book of the year. The other three were basically in third. Now we're in second place, okay? In second place, we have Recursion by Blake Crouch. This book is about a woman who creates a chair that was supposed to help people with Alzheimer's, but unintentionally she makes a chair that can take you back in time and relive your life from memory. That made no sense. Basically, using a memory, you can go back in time into that memory and change the events. I did not like this at all. I gave it a 1.5. I don't like time traveling books because it's always a thing that they majorly mess something up, cause the end of the world, and they're just like, give me five seconds, I'll go back. I don't like that. The plot was boring. 
I don't know why the main characters had to have a romance out of nowhere. Um, I did not like the concept of the time traveling because I hate that they can just go back and change the things that they did wrong. I hated the ending because it was kind of ambiguous and I don't like that. I don't know, I just, I don't like time traveling books. It's not for me. And now, the worst book that I've read in 2023, which is also in the worst five books I've read in my life, is this beautiful gem. Who? Whoever was on the marketing team for this book, you should get a raise because I was bamboozled into thinking this was supposed to be good. What is this? I have never hated a book with more passion than this. I literally wanted to burn it. I wanted to rip it to shreds, but I have sold it. At least I got something out of it. The characters are annoying, dumb, shit. Um, the plot, bad. The chapters are written horrifically. Why do we have time skips that make no sense, that I don't understand? I could go on forever on how bad this book is to me. It is so bad. What is that sound that I'm thinking? It is so bad. I want to give you a zero, but I can't, so I'll give you a one. This is that energy for this book. The ending was terrible. The cover is ugly. The plot is bad, the characters are bad, the romance is horrific. I just hated everything. Everything in this was disgustingly bad, in my opinion. I'm gonna stop ranting over this book because I've ranted enough this entire year since I've read it to my friends because they knew I was gonna hate it. I did not know how much I was gonna hate it, but they were right. But those were the best books that I read this year and the worst horrific unhauled already books that I read this year. I have a lot of new favorites. Love these. Oh my god. Um, I have a new worst book I've ever read. Not that great. Not a thing that I was aiming for, but here we are. If you liked any of these books or you hated these, that's okay. These are my opinions. Just deal with it. But that is everything for today and I'll see you in my next weird video. Bye!